Do you guys align with bikies closely? Do you do a lot of work for them around the world? Well, we don't work for them, but we work with them, and uh, we're friends, yeah. and we party with them. Are you bikies yourselves? I mean, have you got motorbikes? We ride motorcycles, yes. Yeah, what's on? I ride a BMW, and uh, Ernie rides a Harley Davidson. And, and no others in the collection, just the one each, or? That's one each. You're not collectors of motorbikes, are you? Uh, Henry, one of our old guitar players, used to collect uh, old motorcycles. Right. And, uh, at, a, at a time, he had 20 at the same time, but none of them run. Uh -huh. So he was fixing <laughs> all the time, <laughs> but none of them run. They were too old, but they looked beautiful. Can we talk about those people like the Al Wilson and the Bob Hyde who passed away? Would you then tell us if it was honestly drug uh, problems that caused their demise? Well, I guess we can leave it in the open now after all this time and they were both drug overdoses they were and that's the message hard drugs kill now, that what must, else can i tell you must affect you so badly in a group to lose members who you've been working with it's almost a marriage isn't it and you lose someone like that but i noticed both times on both occasions you guys kept playing that same night, I think, you played. Same nights on both, both occasions. What was the theory behind that? What, was, you felt a camaraderie <laughs> thing? Uh, well, most of all was that we had a job to do. Yeah. And the show must go on. Which is the... Yeah, no right. so matter what happens. This is a working group. Yeah. It's a yeah. working band. Yeah. We don't depend on, on, say, hit records or things like that. We, we go out and we work. We you, work live. We you work have, live. You know that Edith works on this show, the television show that goes all around Australia. What sort of, what sort <laughs> what of thing say? do you like doing on Wonder World? Do you like the comedy stuff or do you like the serious stuff or pet Basically, stories? Or what? my style has developed so that I'm not a deliberate comedian, but I do everything and try and keep it light and bubbly so yeah. that people have a pleasant time. How did you get that job? I read in the TV week mm -hmm. that the other reporter was leaving, and so I applied. <laughs> what have you been doing? Because I know here, about 82, 82, no, wait a minute, I'll, I'll do that again. He'll 1980 until 1982, there's this two-year gap, and really we didn't know much about what you were up to. Shh. <laughs> Did you really sell shoes again? No, no, I didn't do that. No? I went on to greater heights. I served beer. Dead set. I sure did. So what do you do in that time when you go off the road? Is it to write material or is it just to take a break and have a nice rest? Where, where do you go? Uh, we just, uh, we just stayed at home. Took it easy. Yeah? Yeah. And you don't like to play a lot of uh, instruments on stage, do you, Steve? So you mm. write, though. You write songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you write? Do you write with the piano, guitar? Um, oh, I try and write with everything, all instruments. And then you can sort of tr um, come up with different sounding and songs different on feel. different, yeah, different right. instruments. Like a song you write on a piano is different to usually the song yeah. you write on a guitar. You wouldn't n necessarily get a good rock song out of a piano, man, would you? No, they're better for ballads because you sort of get the descending chord progressions and things with the bass. There's more feeling. Yeah, but often I just turn on the drum machine and sort of jam along with it, you know, sooner or later something's bound to turn. Yeah. Don't require any alibis. Love dies, but I survive. What would you fellas think? Would you put showmanship, because you're great on stage, before the sound of the music, or is it the music always has to be A1 first, then the showmanship yeah, comes? The, um, the biggest fallacy about Mother Goose, really, is the fact that, well, our biggest problem, actually, um, over the years, has been that people used to walk out of our gigs laughing. And <coughs> all they were thinking about was the theatrical side of the band, not the music. Yeah. And the band's changed dramatically in the last year and a half since Neil joined, actually. And right. um, now, I think for the first time, people are beginning to think that the music is the most important thing. For us it always has been. I mean, well, all that clowning around used to be about 5% of rehearsal time and then the other 95% was and purely the music. Yeah. yeah. But it's been, it just got very soul destroying for people who are primarily musicians to have audiences think about the, yeah. the comedy and that's all they ever rem remembered in their minds instead of remembering the music. So you threw away originally the costumes then you threw away the uniforms. Mm. 
and now it's just you go on in jeans and stuff. No. <laughs> not, not, no, not jeans. But, um, basically... Tracksuits? Ba yeah, basically yeah. sort of slightly futuristic looking tracksuits, basically, yeah. Basically, high tech. It's sort of a bit like... <laughs> high bit tech. Like, a bit like Star Trek, actually. Have you ever thought of going to the UK and through Europe and going to Boise? Actually, we're... We're thinking about that more than ever. Sorry, could, would you like to answer a question here? Yeah, you're yeah, really it? going for it, aren't you? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just relax a little What was the question? <laughs> so how long did you take to compile the book, Matt? Well, I don't know. I started on it when I was, I guess, after I finished the other movie, which was 79. And I've been working on it ever since, Donnie. What was that movie? It was a film called Four Line, a really personal film about the similarity between surfing and skiing and hang gliding. Because that's what I was into then, that's what I was spending all my time doing. Mm -hmm. Now that went out in America and other places, didn't it? But do, was Before it, it was released in Australia, it went to mm. Swiss television and cable TV in the States. Good project. Cool. I really enjoyed it. A little too personal now to look back on, but good project. You like to uh, describe surfing as, as almost a mirror of life and you say how close it is to pop music and to life in general. Just go a well, bit further on I that. I think the parallels between uh, that and rock and roll are really, yeah. really strong. You know, it sort of came out of the 60s, out of the 50s, where uh, that's the same as rock and roll to my head, really came right. out of rhythm and blues was set in a sort of certain style. And, you know, I mean, I really feel a close correlation there between rock and roll all the way. Right. And uh, when it came into people really... Uh, There's the, uh, the cameraman again, by the way. He's uh, looking for his mum. The ghost that rock. He hasn't found it yet. Looks <laughs> like he can use a. Uh, two people are neither young nor brothers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like surfing and rock and roll, they've always been correlated really closely. You know, I mean. Um, if you start to, uh, when you get up to sort of contemporary times of the Beach Boys, of course, and then sort of back to uh, what was going on in, you know, like the 60s and then through to the yeah. 70s, and then, you know, I, I think it's all really great. I love to uh, love to reflect on the music that was being played in the era of when the actual surfing was being done, because right. they all closely relate to each other. Oh, my God. Tell us the story, because it's quite confusing of how you two <laughs> fellas get together. You originated in Perth, went around the world, but at separate times. Just explain how and when. Uh, well, I met James at a... I was playing in a band in Perth, and um, he came back from... He'd been over to England and America, and he'd seen all these bands like the Ramones in that 1976. And uh, before all that sort of stuff hit in Australia. Yeah. And we're on here. Yeah, we're yeah. on here. We're on here. <laughs> it's, yeah. all right. And uh, he had a Ramones T-shirt on, and I thought he's a, you know, who's a schoolboy come and see my band playing. I didn't, you know, and he had the same haircut he's got now. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So uh, I thought yeah. this person looks like a, someone might know. He might know something about music. So I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks <that's> right. <laughs> that's terrific, Dave. <laughs> and you actually, all overseas, you ran into uh, the guy out of the Sex Pistols. Where, tell us that story. Uh, well, I used to know Sid Vicious. Yeah. Reasonably well. Uh, How did you meet on a bus or something? Oh yeah, we went on a bus on the way to. Uh, I was going down the Kings Road, Chelsea, and. Uh, Sid Vicious was sitting there looking, looking like Eddie Cochran, not like the person he uh, looked like in there. the Sex Pistols. Right. He was a very smart guy, very uh, intelligent guy. And intelligent? Yeah, <laughs> very intelligent. Uh, <laughs> his music taste was, was f fantastic. Uh, really any tips? Did he give you any tips? Or what did you actually talk about? Um, well, we talked about uh, the Ramones and then... Uh, Lo lo lots of bands that we went and saw in London at the time, the Clash, the first Clash gigs and that. But didn't you, re you audition for the Clash? Was that not true? Uh, was drama? Yeah, I auditioned for the Clash, 19, uh, November 1976, but I failed. It was a harrowing, <laughs> harrowing experience, <laughs> obviously. Who <laughs> remembers the date? You've got an yeah, album CBS are making that comes out in CBS? Christmas. Yeah, apparently I heard yeah. Tojo's going to go on that. Right. And um, Dig It Up's on the Triple J album. Yeah, it's a live Live version. and wireless. And then we've got the one on the Phantom compilation, Leilani, which is shown here quite a few times. Yeah. And you've got your single around that's in the top 40. Yeah. Here's, here's, like, here's a group, you know, they're good. almost brand new to the scene. And bingo, they've got album singles and things going everywhere. It's fabulous. Exactly. It's not what too bad, hey? Yeah.